Hi, I'm Dr. Vincent Ho. I'm a gastroenterologist and a senior university lecturer. I'm also the gut doctor. Have you ever wondered how gallstones come about? Today, we're going to dive into the fascinating world of gallstones and the symptoms that can occur. The story of gallstones is an interesting one. We start off with bile, which is a yellowish green fluid produced by the liver containing bile acids. These bile acids play a very important role in the breakdown of fat into smaller parts, a process which is called emulsification. Think of it as working very similar to how detergent works in your kitchen. These bile acids need to be stored and the gallbladder is that reservoir for the storage of bile. The gallbladder is a small pear-shaped hollow organ which is located just underneath the liver. Its length is approximately 7 to 11 centimeters and it's around 2.5 centimeters wide. Bile drains from the liver via small ducts into the gallbladder. After a high fat meal, when fat arrives into the first part of the small bowel called the duodenum, hormones such as cholecystokinin cause the gallbladder to contract to release bile into the duodenum where it breaks down fat. The sphincter of body helps to control release of that bile into the duodenum. Now, sometimes we can get the components of bile, such as cholesterol and bilirubin, becoming more solid and clumped into a pebble-like material. These are called gallstones. Classically, gallstones have been divided into three different types based on cholesterol content. These are cholesterol stones, which have high levels of cholesterol, pigment stones that predominantly come about because of abnormalities in bilirubin metabolism and tend to have low levels of cholesterol and mixed stones which are thought of as halfway in between cholesterol and pigment stones. This is a very rough classification and we now know from research into the composition of gallstones that there are actually more types. In fact one study has found eight different types of gallstones. Most gallstones are small and pass through our biliary system and never cause problems. But on occasion, they can become big enough to block a duct. And when this happens, it can be a real problem. For example, gallstones can cause obstruction of the cystic duct leading out of the gallbladder. And this can result in rather excruciating pain in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen when the gallbladder contracts. This usually happens after a fatty meal. The medical term for this is biliary colic. When the obstruction persists, this can result in inflammation, infection, distension of the gallbladder, and even a lack of blood flow, all of which can lead to a condition called cholecystitis. Most causes of cholecystitis are due to gallstones, but on occasion, and usually in very sick patients, it can happen without the presence of gallstones. Cholecystitis can present with marked right upper quadrant pain, fever, and nausea, and may necessitate both antibiotics and also emergent surgery, a procedure known as a cholecystectomy. Gallstones can also block the common bile duct and prevent bile from reaching the intestine. This can lead to jaundice because of the buildup of the yellow pigment bilirubin and even cause an infection of the bile duct called cholangitis, which can be quite serious. This may require a fairly urgent intervention to remove the obstructed stone from the common bile duct, an endoscopic procedure called an ERCP. Gallstones can also obstruct the pancreatic duct, and by preventing the release of pancreatic enzymes that break down protein, the enzymes start to auto-digest the pancreas tissue leading to an inflammatory reaction called acute gallstone pancreatitis. I hope you've enjoyed this video. You can check out more Gut Doctor 3D animations on this playlist over here. Please leave your comments and thoughts down below and subscribe to the Gut Doctor channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you next time.